There's a place in northern Colorado which tells a tale of local history 100 million years in the making. We're going to the Devil's Backbone open space in Larimer County, Colorado to explore its history. It's a ridge of early Cretaceous sedimentary rock deposited when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Sedimentary rocks are rocks that have been formed from other rocks and created as part of an erosive, weathering, or diagenetic process. They are found in great thicknesses here in the western half of the North American continent and are the product of a 600 million year cycle of uplift and erosion, desert, seas, shallow tidal flats, lakes, rivers, and mountain building. Here in northern Colorado, geoscientists are only a half hour's drive away from an unusual outcrop of rock located just west of Loveland called the Devil's Backbone. We're going to take a trip there today to see if we can learn something about this unusual and interesting formation of rock. Whenever you go into the field, it's a good idea to be prepared. Even if the trip is close to home, you will always want to take more supplies than you think you'll need. Who knows, you may meet another person on the trail who needs your help. It's also a good idea to leave a travel plan behind so your loved ones know your itinerary. It's easy to get to the Devil's Backbone open space. Take Interstate 25 to Loveland and exit Highway 34 heading west. You drive through town seven miles west of the interstate and look for Hidden Valley Drive on the right. There's a sign here. Ah, there's my turn off. In 1878, Aaron Benson built the Loudoun Irrigation Ditch to bring water from the Big Thompson River to the Devil's Backbone outcrop. It's still in use today. His efforts made possible the farming of hops by Alfred Wilde, who later discovered gypsum and fire clay for bricks on his property. These sedimentary deposits, found in the nearby Morrison Formation, were the first indications to geologists and paleobiologists that the area was rich in mineral deposits and fossils. A prehistoric elephant from the Cenozoic era and some other fossils were recovered close by. Over the millennia since the dawn of time, the land has gone through endless transitions, from lava flows to mountains which have worn down, to swamp, riverbed, even ocean bottoms, then deserts and mountains again. Immense quantities of materials have been deposited on the continent, worn away, and been reburied. Animals have lived and died here, and a few here and there have left their mark. The forces at work are so large, so slow, and so old that a public comprehension of the scope of what geologists call deep time is still in its infancy. Scientists use modern tools such as radiometric dating, studies of paleomagnetism, and stratigraphy to unlock the secrets of the past. Geologists hold that much of the rock that was softer here eroded away, and this sandstone, called the Dakota Formation, was harder and resisted eroding. It was thus exposed. Nicholas Steno and his contemporaries of the late 17th century determined that older rocks generally lie beneath younger rocks, and these rocks may contain the fossilized remains of once living organisms, with the ages of the organisms varying from antiquity to much younger, but still ancient remains. This was a remarkable feat, considering that the unconformities created by uplift, erosion, and movements of the earth can make reading the stratigraphy a challenge. The first person to consider this idea, however, was Ibn Sina a Muslim geographer who surmised this concept in his 1027 work, The Book of Healing. He is considered the first person to conceive of uniformitarianism, the idea that the physical laws of the present are the laws that existed during the past, here on Earth and all over the universe. Look at the tilting of the rock. If it's sedimentary rock, it was laid down horizontally. How did it get turned on end? You will see many boulders along the trail. Some are a meter high and many show embedded stones cemented together with silica. Geologists call rocks like this conglomerates, or in some cases if the stones in the matrix are broken and sharp edged, brecci. It's a good idea when you go on the trail to bring the proper gear and to remember to stay hydrated. There are many heat stroke injuries on the trail during the summer months. We're standing in front of this magnificent structure called the keyhole. It's made of sandstone and it's tilted at a great Great angle, nearly 90 degrees. I'm standing here with Rob Novak of the Larimer County Department of Natural Resources. 
Rob, would you like to tell us how this sandstone came to be tilted like this? Yeah, absolutely. What we're seeing here at the angle is actually the remnant of a great fold in the earth, which a geologist would call an antipode. Okay. And so when there's horizontal stresses put on different rock layers, in some cases those rock layers might break, and you get older Precambrian rock coming up from uh, from the earth, like we see in the Rocky Mountains. Okay. Whereas here on the foothills we get more bends, and so if the bend is in a uh, convex fashion, we've got an anticline, okay. and our concave bends are called synclines. Great. And so this entire valley used to be filled in with this great dome, uh, which ended at Mariana View, which is to the south, and then this was the topmost layer. And so following uh, the dome being bent, we had a ton of erosion come through with uh, many, many different floods that have carved out this valley. And what we're left with now is just this remnant where we can see where the dome would have gone and uh, the different formations in the Dakota sandstone here. Excellent. Well, thank you, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. This trail continues north and reaches as far as Horsetooth Mountain Park west of Fort Collins. The intrepid hiker and avid outdoor enthusiast has a large matrix of trails to explore since Larimer County has linked these trails together. We've seen what we've come to see, however, so let's head back and get the word on why the backbone is so oddly tilted. You can see the formations of the rocks that existed here. The lichens formation was at the bottom. Gelman Trotta was on top. The Morrison was the was next deposited, and last came the Dakota. Through the years, all of this material eroded away, and only the Dakota was left. The valley is likely full of the sediment from this erosion process, and other parts of this formation lie underground, awaiting the long hand of time to change its form. Imagine that, in a 30 million year time frame, 100 million years ago, this entire region was alternatively under sea or a desert, and was populated by an amazing variety of flora and fauna. These species have been swept away by the vast gulf of time, and only a few fossilized remains are left. Indeed, much of the land itself is gone, and the only thing remaining is the sandstone itself, tilted on its side by immense mountain building forces that are, many geoscientists say are right now lifting, tilting, and folding the Rockies and the foothills. You can see the Dakota sandstone's former shape, before the forces of erosion were 